G'day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. First things first, what is this? And this? I'm dying. I don't know what it is. Well, they're just pimples, but I don't know what... I don't know what it is. I'm struggling at the moment. Last week I had a bloodshot eye, and now I've got some sort of skin disease. Today's video is going to be about the year 2015. Which you guys are probably like, what's he, what, what's he doing? So, if I had had YouTube back then, I would have shown you all this great content. Considering it's a bit of a slow week, um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to go through it. It was Valentine's Day. What a day. What a day to spend with your special someone. So I spent it with good mate Aussie Cookson. We worked the World Cup cricket opening game, Australia, England, MCG, and we were selling the records. I loved the part of recording where you go into the ground and you sell them. So I'd always go around the corporate boxes and because I knew One Direction were in town that day and I'm a big fan of One Direction, not even, like, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. I thought I saw Harry Styles. So I took a photo of this guy when I was up in the corporate boxes up on the second level thinking it's Harry Styles and he turns around and it wasn't. Just when you think the day can't get any better. Me and Cooko grab our dollar dollar bills and uh, we were going to head home. We go past any Ed Stadium on the way home. So we got to Southern Cross Station and we're like, oh, well, let's go have a quick look. The tickets weren't too expensive considering the amount of money we made that day. So we went to One Direction and oh, it was just one of the funniest experiences I've ever had. We're taking the piss out of it the whole time, even though I do love One Direction and know all their songs. Uh, it was an absolute blast. I did a bit of ground announcing at Werribee Fee at Fowl Football Club. I did 10 or 11 home games. And if you haven't heard the story, pretty much long story short, my first day working at the Werribee Football Club, I had to do the Anzac Day announcements. Uh, but because it was my first day, the media manager, Kevin Hillier, uh, took the announcements. But I had to press and play the song. So I got taught how to use the CD machine. It was just me and the stats boys in the box. <laughs> and when Kev, who was emceeing, the, uh, the Anzac Day usual routine speeches, uh, said, all right, now upstanding for the national anthem. The CD machine didn't work. So it was my first day. All the North boys from Werribee just standing in the rain. There was a lot of official people on the ground, the president of Werribee, and I just couldn't get this CD machine working. They just kept saying, like, not reading the CD. And this is my first day, so. Another thing I did to do with football was TSC Cup commentary, which was an absolute blast. Um, yeah, I did a little bit of ground announcing on the boundary. Got to interview your Darcy Tuckers, your Darcy Parishes, your Jacob Hoppers. Got to interview Jordan Gallucci, who's probably gonna go top 20 in tomorrow's draft. So, and probably the highlight was the TSC Cup grand final on Eddie Had Stadium. <laughs> But yeah, Tack Up, it was so much fun to do. Um, and I actually did it earlier this year before giving it away just because I wanted to focus on the uh, comedic side of things. Bruce McAvaney here. Another thing that sparked my interest halfway through the year was the Radio Training Institute's six month radio course. It was one of the greatest things I've ever done in my life. Uh, it gave me confidence, it gave me skill, it gave me a job, well, not, no job yet, but it gave me everything else and I absolutely loved it. To do with the Radio Training Institute, we got to go on a tour of the Fox, which going to the Fox is like, it's my favourite station, I look up to everyone on that station, I want to be most of the people in that station and yeah, got to tour it, which was uh, so much fun. Fox, uh, I'm dropping a bit of Felix and Jasmine right now with Ain't Nobody. Love for you to call me 13 10, 60. And also the Radio Training Institute wasn't too far from the Fox, so when the Bieber came to town, I went over and <laughs> listened to him do the, uh, the world famous rooftop rock on Biebs 2015. 
And then to top things off, in 2015, I had blonde hair. I did. Um, it looks shocking. It looks so bad. It looks terrible. The story behind that was me and my mates were just sitting around um, and one of my friends, Ethan Baker, said he wants to get the Bieber blonde hair. And uh, I said, oh yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Like, if you could pull it off, it's pretty sick. And then all the boys said, get it, get it, Bakes. And then he goes, only if you get it too. <laughs> and I said, why not? So uh, we went down to Hair House Warehouse, got some bleach and just chucked it in and it went a bit orangey. But yeah, we got the uh, we got the job done. Then the next day I went and saw uh, Ethan and he had brown hair. What they say, once you go blonde, you never go back. Unless you die it two days later. Which he left me high and dry. He um he dyed it back. And um yeah, it looked like a cockhead. Anyway guys, bit of a different video today, more of a sharing and caring sort of vibe. More of a more of a So in the next couple of weeks I'm hoping to get a sporting challenge with my mates. Um, a collab with another YouTuber. Collab. Collab sounds a bit Who are ya? How are you going sort of stuff. But I'm hoping to work with another YouTuber. Another video I want to bring out before the end of the year is things I remember from high school. Uh, I've got a few things written down. So there should be plenty of stuff coming because I just told you. Um, yeah, I will see you next week, next Thursday. Hopefully you're free. And um, yeah, it's been good. It's been great.